Welcome to Lighthouse. Welcome to Lighthouse online today on Palm Sunday. This is, uh, we are getting closer to Easter and uh, because of that we have some announcement for you this morning related to the coming week. Just after this service, I think the youth uh, will meet on, trying to meet on Zoom. Hopefully it will work for them and as individual um, uh, people. And we have other uh, announcements. So we ask you to pray with us for a special week. Good Friday online service. It will be online and we are going to try to share the Lord's Supper together online. So we will give you some more instructions about the time of the meeting. It's not really decided yet, but we know that on Good Friday, we are going to meet you just like we do on Sunday. But also, if you can join us on the Zoom itself, you will be able to even interact with us, maybe in a time of prayer. So on Good Friday, stay tuned, check on the live feed, uh, check on Zoom, check on YouTube, on Facebook. We will share the Lord's Supper. We will give you earlier in the week some instructions. Prepare your bread, prepare your, your juice, and we will be having a special uh, church uh, Lord's Supper time together, together with some devotional. Easter service next week, same time. Pastor Jennifer will be our speaker. We will have special videos of the meaning of, of Easter. Uh, you have received an announcement this week. I've been writing a few times asking everybody in the church to send us uh, some recording of yourself about the meaning of Easter. It can be a drawing if you are with your family. It can be your child drawing. Uh, an Easter postcard with an Easter wish. Send us something about the meaning of Easter. We'll put it all together in videos next week and we will be able to, to en enjoy. So we want to uh, continue here with the message this morning. Father, lead us into the message this morning. We pray that you will be with us, that the Holy Spirit will be ministering to us today. Amen, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Okay, so this morning we want to talk about following Jesus in the shadow of the cross. So are you ready with me this morning to follow in the shadow of the cross? We are going to stay in John chapter 12. We're going to go through the chapter, make some observations, and learn some uh, lessons as we go along, just highlighting some of the part. So let's start in John chapter 12, uh, with the beginning of the chapter. We start and we learn from uh, the text this morning, the timing of this chapter, six days before the Passover celebration, Jesus, uh, comes into Bethany. He goes to the house of his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, and a dinner is prepared for them. Martha, of course, is the one serving. And then Mary takes a jar of perfume. Of course, different Bible version gives us a different uh, quantity, but after I search for, for the quantity a little bit more, I was curious about the quantity of perfume she used because uh, a while ago I was in an airport coming back from a, a mission trip and I was uh, there at the airport and I saw the perfume sections and as you know I love my wife I wanted to surprise her so I bought a, a, a big uh, quantity of perfume there was a special it was a very popular brand, a good brand, and I wanted to buy, uh, be a bit extravagant and buy a big quantity. There was a discount, no tax, so I bought a big quantity of perfume. Uh, in the bottle it says 34 on ounces, fluid ounces, about 100 millimeter of perfume. But the quantity 
Milliliter. Milliliter. The quantity that uh, Mary used is five times more. So she was very extravagant in her love to Jesus because it was a very unique act for a very special occasion. It was um, an anointing in anticipation that Jesus is telling us in this text, an anticipation of his burial. And the chapter 12, we follow Jesus in the shadow of the cross. We are moving along the cross. We are a few hours, we are just a few days before the cross of Jesus Christ and he knows it and we are following Jesus that time. So Mary did a great thing and in other gospel uh, that talks about the same event, it says that in every place, every time the gospel message will be preached, will be read, we will remember this extravagant act of worship and devotions from Mary. Hallelujah. And we read in this text a, a very special uh, observation. Now the house was filled with the fragrance. Hallelujah. The house was filled with the fragrance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That means that this is a special parenthesis note. The author wanted us. He was observing the scene. He was there. He smelled the fragrance and he wanted to tell us. He wanted to make us feel the moment. And now the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. What a wonderful description to show us in these details the exactitude and the truthfulness of the account of the gospel. And this is wonderful to know that. Let's move to the other uh, next part. Then we read the next day. So we are moving on six days before the, the, the event of the Passover. And now we are the next day after that. And Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And we read in this text that Jesus found a young donkey. One interesting note, uh, observation in this text, is that the writer John here does not give us all the details that we read in the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, of what the disciples have done to find the donkey. We just says Jesus found the donkey. Because the purpose of John here is to focus on the prophecy. The prophetic aspect, this is a great moment to, to declare the Messiah has come, that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the Messiah. And he is going to quote uh, the, the text from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on the donkey's call. And then we read in this text, these things his disciples did not understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into this glory, they remembered these things and uh, what happened and realized that these things had been written about him. So in the King James, it mentions three times these things they did not understand. And when these things happen after they remember these things, the author really wants to give us a comment about uh, these things that his disciple did not understand at first when these things happen. It is another note of the author. It's important for us to know that they did not understand. At the moment of the event, what was happening before their eyes. The insight was given to them later on by the Holy Spirit after Jesus entered into his glory, after the resurrection and after he returned to the Father. And they realized at that time, when they look back, how Jesus had led them while they were walking with, with Jesus, how Jesus was leading them step by step and how he deepened their understanding. So I want you and I to stop at this moment 
and stop and think this morning about how the Lord Jesus has done the exact same thing with us. I remember many times before I became a born-again Christian that the Lord Jesus came to reach into my heart. Things that I have learned, things that I have read, things that I have heard about Jesus, and I did not seize anything. I remember one time I was in Vancouver. I had been planting trees in the Rocky Mountains. I came downtown and uh, someone shared with me about Jesus Christ. And I forgot everything about it. One time I was traveling uh, earlier on in, in, in across Canada and I was in Calgary and there were street preachers preaching about Jesus. I forgot everything about it. And different times in the past, Jesus came to reach out to me, and I did not. But after I was born again, suddenly all of these good memories of how the Lord came to knock at the door of my heart came to realize to me. Praise the Lord. And in your life, the same thing is true. Jesus reached out to you, and you were not ready to receive it. You, you had a veil over your eyes. You could not see it at the time. But Jesus made you understand these things later on, how he came to you and how much he sought for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we have a little note following, just a, before that text, that many in the crowd came because of Lazarus when Jesus rose him from the dead. They heard about it, and then verse 18, there was the reason why so many went out to him, because they had heard about the miraculous signs. So at that time, already you see different reactions. Many people were curious. Many people were coming to Jesus. The crowd was getting bigger and bigger because of the resurrection of Lazarus that took place a while ago. But the Pharisees, the adversaries, were annoyed, they were angry, they were jealous of the popularity of Jesus Christ, and they were seeking to destroy him. And there's a note here that I wrote in my notes to, for you this morning. Jealousy is sickening. Jealousy, it leads to murder in the story of Jesus. If not at the cross, it leads to murdering with lips as well. It makes people bitter. It makes people divide with those that they should be loving. And it hinders the work of God. And there's only one cure for against, against jealousy. It is to receive Jesus Christ and to be born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's move on. And we are at uh, the next step. Uh, the next step. Some Greeks want to meet Jesus. This is a very important time according to Jesus. Jesus notes this time as he addressed this situation. Non-Jewish people have come to the feast and now they are seeking to see Jesus and they ask Philip, lead us to the master. And Jesus gives us this very important uh, text. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted and dies, it cannot produce, and it speaks to us about the necessity of the death of Jesus Christ. And not only about the death of Jesus Christ, but also to indicate to us and to demonstrate the power of Jesus Christ, the power of God over death, and to create in our hearts the hope of the resurrection as we move on toward the event of Easter and the Holy Week. The resurrection of Jesus Christ will prove to us that God has the power of eternal life and that Jesus Christ has the same eternal life and he will bestow it on all who believe. And then we, we come to this very important text about loving our life and hating our life. These are always disturbing texts. It's always difficult text to, to accept hating our, our life and, and things. So let's ask the question, what makes our life precious? Truly, what makes our life precious? Certainly not our bank account and 
only our, our human reputation, what people think of us. There should be something more that makes our life precious. Our life is precious only because it's eternal. Our life is precious only because it will never end. It will, we will go into eternity. This is clear in the scriptures and that's what makes our life precious. The Bible and Jesus ex explained to us that some people will lose their life. And uh, this is a great saying. It is often repeated in the scriptures. In many texts of the gospel, in Mark 8 and Matthew 16 and Luke 9 and in other texts also. Let me read to you Mark 8, 35. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospel will save it. For he that hates his life. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus used this text again and he used the terms in relation to our father, our mother, our wife, our children, brothers and sisters, our possessions in our own life. If we don't hate these, we cannot be his disciple. So in that text, when it says hate, it means always we need to understand that very clearly. It's always a term of comparison. It's always in comparison to a choice that comes uh, between us being the disciple and Jesus. Choosing between Jesus and choosing between other things or other people. It's always a term of comparison. So it's not really hating our fathers. Of course we understand that. But it is loving more Jesus over everything in comparison. It is when the choice between Christ and the things of this life. And the terms used in this text is the soul. Losing your soul. Using the soulish things of this life. The human, the earthly things that we all done to so dearly. It, uh, other texts of the Bible use care nothing for their life lose his life for my sake and for the gospel. Whoever is willing to give up their life in this world to gain Christ. So that helps us to accept uh, this text and understand it. So we have to consider our soul precious in view of eternal life. This is the most important thing. Then Jesus goes on to, to talking to his disciple if you are my disciple, you will follow me. My disciple follow me where I am. My disciple will be also. So we are following the Lord heavenward. We are following the Lord on in the shadow of the cross this morning. We are following Jesus because we love him. We are following. You know, the good thing is that when we are following Jesus in the shadow of the cross, it will lead us to the cross, but it will also take us to the resurrection glory. And there is a reward for following Jesus in the shadow of the cross. The reward is that the Father will honor you. We are never losing in choosing Jesus above everything. There is a price to pay for being a disciple of Jesus Christ, but the reward Think about the reward. The reward is eternal. You will not lose your soul. You will find your life. You will find your life for eternity. Then we come to the next text where Jesus expresses anguish. His soul is greatly dis distressed. Jesus knows the agonies of the cross, the agonies that the Holy Week will bring, would involve into the cross was a shadow over the entire life of Jesus Christ. Think about that. Jesus always knew that this hour would come. We read it in this text. Father, deliver me from this hour? No. But for this very reason, I have come to this hour. The whole ministry of Jesus Christ, this purpose was for this reason, his entire life and ministry. He knew it was this purpose for you and for me. Praise the Lord. And the third time 
the voice from heaven comes from the Father to attest that Jesus Christ is the beloved Son of God. And then it says, Father, glorify your name. And the Father's voice says, I have glorified it in Jesus Christ, and I will glorify it again in Jesus Christ. You will do it. And this voice, Jesus, is telling us this morning, rejoice. This voice is not for my benefit. It is for your benefit, for my benefit this morning. Hallelujah. And then we come to this wonderful text when Jesus announced to us, the judgment time has come. What is going to happen at the cross? The price that is going to be paid. When Jesus will say, all is finished. Jesus says the judgment of this world and the judgment of the prince of this world, Satan, the, the ruler, the tempter, the deceiver is taking place at that time. The ruler of this world is will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from this world, from this earth, I will draw all men. And this text here, lifted up, has a double meaning. It means elevated, like he will be elevated from the ground on the cross. But it's also exaltation. Not because, you know, historian knows, people can read it. You can tell someone that Jesus was elevated on the cross. But unless they elevate Jesus in their heart, unless they elevate Jesus to become the kings of their life, the ruler of their life, that they give him this life, their, their life and they receive him, they have not yet understood the, the, the true meaning. Unless they, Jesus is lifted on the cross and unless people exalt Jesus on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. And this text is leading us to believe. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become the son of light. When Jesus had said these things, he went away and hid himself from them. And although Jesus had performed so many miracles and signs before them, before their eyes, they still refused to believe in him. Wow. The call, the last call, we can say, actually it was going to be my title in this uh, message at one point. I was hesitating between following Jesus in the shadow of the cross or the last call, believe. The last call, Jesus has spent three years. He's been displaying his power. He's been revealing true signs and wonders, who he was. He's been telling, he's been arguing, he's been showing proof. And now he's going to give like a last call. Believe. Believe as long as you have the, the light. Believe as long as you have the light. And then we read that even though they have seen so many signs and miracles, they refuse to believe in him. This is a crucial time here. Jesus come to the end of his public ministry. And his remaining hours, he will be going into hiding in a way of speaking. And then he will go to John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's the private meeting with the, the disciples. His public ministry is coming with a call, a last call. Yes, argued so many times. The, the old gospel of John is about showing them signs and they come against him, they argue against him, then he, they, they don't want to believe it. and he's giving them signs over signs and now he's going to uh, heal himself from public life and the last call is uh, believe, believe and then he will, he will do that. And then he address us as sons of light. Are you a child of the light? Are you showing Jesus Christ in your life? Can other people see Jesus into your actions? And then we can ask a question this morning. Why? Why have they not believed in Jesus after seeing him doing so many, after the resurrection 
of Lazarus and so many signs and wonders after the multiplication of the bread, after so many signs and wonders. And John is giving us the answer through quoting two prophecies here from Isaiah the prophet. Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord is a picture, is a figurative uh, speech this morning to, to say to us, to remind us the powerful acts, miraculous signs and wonders that the Lord has performed. Who has believed in these to recognize the Lord? And then he gives us another reason in verse 39. For this reason, they could not believe because the Lord himself has led them to blind their eyes. But you know, there's, there is something to reflect upon here this morning and then this text. You know, it is possible to harden your hearts through unbelief. And at some point, your own hardening of hearts will lead you to a total hardening of hearts. That's a bit what this text means. It is possible to harden your heart that your heart will come to a place where it will not believe anymore. Because, you know, we read in Romans chapter 1 that the Lord give them over to their passions, to their lust. So the Lord give people who start to show unbelief, who wants to disobey the Lord, He will give them over. You don't want to believe, then He will harden their heart in the way that their heart becomes so so high. God will give people what their heart desire and unfortunately they will lose their chance to salvation by doing that. We move on over that and the good part here. Isaiah said these things because he saw Christ's glory. Wow that's wonderful that Jesus Christ, the eternal Christ, was seen by the prophet Isaiah. What a wonderful declaration to us this morning. But look at verse 42. Nevertheless, this is something important in our text this morning. Even among the rulers, even among the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin members, even among them, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess it. Or they did not confess him. Actually, there is no it or him. They did not confess. They did not confess that, that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. The, among many of the rulers, some of them have believed. They have come to that conclusion that Jesus is the one announced in the scriptures. He is the Messiah. But the fear of being expelled from the synagogue, but the fear of the, of the Sanhedrin, the fear of the, being rejected, is, is they are going into hiding, they, they hide their, their faith, and they are a bit hypocrites, they are cowards in their faith. And sometimes we do that too. We have people who believe, they agree, they, they say yes in their heart to the testimony of scriptures concerning Jesus Christ, but they, they don't live the life, they don't show, they don't express, they don't go full, full the, the full way of the disciple of Jesus Christ. They do the, the same thing here. This is a remarkable statement also that even that the writer here is telling us, he wants us to know that, that even among the rulers, it's a remarkable statement of the effect that Jesus Christ has had in Jerusalem over them. He had an effect. His words spoke power. His, his act of power revealed to them and many of them came to that conclusion but they were coward and they did not confess it openly. Like Nicodemus, for example, uh, Joseph of Arimati also were among, among them. And then we, we get an explanation about that. For they love praise from men more than praise from God. In my text here, I have used, For they love the glory of men more than the glory of God. And I prefer that text. 
The Greek word is doxa, which is used for glory. And when I looked at the Hebrew, uh, the Greek dictionary, it's really the term for glory, the dignity, the honor. And also it's a very general term, what people think, the reputations that we will have, uh, what we will be accounted for, and how people will estimate us. Their opinion is very important. So here, it is very shocking, and we hope that we will not be like that. That we believe, they believe, but they keep it a secret because they prefer rather than, more than, the glory of man over the glory of God. And that is very sad. This morning, Jesus Christ, as we follow him in the shadow of the cross, as we follow him into this chapter, he is calling us to believe, to follow him as disciple, to be willing to lose our life to follow him. Wherever he is, that we will be there also, that we will seek his glory over the glory of man. This is the challenge that we have before us this morning. The last call before Jesus will go into a private time with his disciples is believe while you have the light. A different faith response. And I believe that we are coming close to the return of Jesus Christ. Look what's happening in this world. This week, someone, a former Lighthouse member, actually, Brother Bob uh, from uh, uh, the U.S., sent us a picture on, uh, on WhatsApp uh, from a, a preacher that wrote the book, The Vision, in the 70s. He also, a, a movie was made on this book years ago. He prophesied a long time ago about an epidemic that would come over the world like never before. And that epidemic would be very extreme over New York City more specifically. And that would announce uh, a sign of the Lord's coming. Whatever we believe, uh, whatever we, we would tend to believe that the Lord is coming soon, the, the Word of God always tells us, be ready because it will come as a thief. Whether it comes soon or a delay, we need to be ready. And we need to have this faith. We, have, we need to have this faith of a disciple of Jesus Christ. Take it very seriously. The last call, believe. So, and in and, and, and our text today, we find different type of people in, in this chapter. We have uh, four groups here. Let me just give you a summary of that. Different faith response. We have a group that say, in spite of having seen so many miracles, they do not believe. Of that crowd, we have read just before that an excited crowd of curious people who had seen or heard about the resurrection of Lazarus and they had come to see Jesus. They were curious, they wanted to see more miracles, but among them, sadly and sur surprisingly, we read that they refused to believe. We have those who have shown a temporary excitement and we have a lot of that. As we are sharing Jesus around the world, as we are, are inviting people to come to church, we have seen many people come and go. We have seen people trying Jesus to see how Jesus would be blessing them. And then after a while, maybe they are disappointed. And we go over the, the parable of the sowers and the different type of ground. Some of them will be choked. Some of them will, will, will grow for a time and then will, 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 will dry up. Uh, some of them are in, in the rocky ground and only one ground will bear fruits. So we have a, some who, who don't believe 
We have some who only show a temporary excitement. We have some, some who have a hidden faith. They believe, but they hide their faith because they prefer the glory of man over the glory of God. And then you have happily the saving faith, the discipleship faith, the true faith, the faith of those who will lose their life, the faith of those who will love Jesus above anything, the, the, the one who will follow Jesus, whatever the cost, they will follow in the shadow of the cross, they will take their cross, they will lose their life, they will prefer Jesus Christ. Amen? And we conclude with this this morning. I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. No more darkness. Let's be children of light this morning. If anyone hears my words and does not obey them, I do not judge them, for I have not come to judge the world but to save the world. Earlier in this text, Jesus says, I'm not going to judge them if they don't receive my word. My word will be judging them. So, and then he says, I have come not to judge. That means I have come to save the world. And this, this chapter ends on a high note. The will of the Father, the commandment of the Father, that followed as followed as as a man as the son of man as the one who came to save us it is eternal life it is to save us to eternal life so as we close this morning with this statement that everyone who believes that is the will of god that is the purpose of the jesus that is the will of the father the way of salvation i have come to save the world the commandment is that they will receive eternal life the purpose of the first mission of jesus is eternal life is salvation so jesus in this chapter is concluding his public ministry it's the last call believe live the life be willing to be my disciple be serious Recommit this morning. Make your choice. Decide. Hallelujah. Decide now on which side you will be on. Decide now which group you will be among those who are excited for a time, among those who refuse to believe or no. We choose this morning to believe. Father God, as we end this strong text of the gospel message, as we have read this morning, that you come to the end part of your public ministry, you have come to announce, to declare, to let us see the Father. You displayed signs and wonders to show us who you were, to lead us to believe. You have called us countless times to believe. You have announced, you have fulfilled prophecies. And Lord, Lord, we come to the end. We are following you into this last week, to Good Friday, to your death on the cross, to your suffering. And Lord, as your disciple, we say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for calling us this morning to believe. Thank you for reviving our faith. Thank you, Lord, for touching our lives deeply. Thank you for calling us this morning to rise up and be strong and courageous and to confess our faith in you. Lord, we choose to be your disciple. We say, yes, Lord, we want to follow you in the shadow of the cross. And we want to come up with you in the glory of the resurrection. Thank you for the hope. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your suffering on your behalf. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for calling us and giving us the privilege to be your disciple. So in a time that is difficult now, in a time of, of confinement, in a time of darkness, we see the light. You said, 
believe as you see the light. And we see the light this morning, and we choose to believe. In the name of Jesus, we pray your blessing over the churches of Lighthouse, over the churches of Hong Kong, over our families, over our loved ones, over our nations, and all nations of this world. Lord, you are merciful. You may exercise your judgment, but actually you are calling the multitudes to turn to you, to repent and to be saved. And help us, enable us to be among those who will confess our faith and share the glorious message of the gospel to all people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Uh, we think of you. Check with us throughout the week. We will uh, send you some devotional. We will communicate more details about Good Friday. Let's pray and let's meet again. God bless you. Thank you for being with us online today. We love you. We think of you. In Jesus' name, amen.